A special thanks to today's sponsor, Brilliant. I am very lucky to have a lot of reptiles and I love them all, but I haven't loved every one I've ever had. So today, let's go over the top five reptiles I regret getting, and you might too. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You watch Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, okay, no, I do not regret getting Diamond. We're actually using him because he is the least regretful animal that I have ever picked up. I didn't really want a bearded dragon. If you're an OG subscriber, you know that I always had a leopard gecko on my shoulder. I used to talk mad trash about bearded dragons. Uh, I actually love bearded dragons now, and I'm so glad I got Diamond. But there are five species that I am, <sighs> I am regretful that I got. So let's just get into it. Now, this might be specific species or just a specific animal, starting off with number five, my very first BCI. So my very, and they were still called BCIs, not just BIs then. We're talking about boa constrictor emperata, or boa emperata, I guess they are now, a common boa. Now, this animal came to me before I had a YouTube channel. We're talking about, I guess it would have been some, where are you going? We're talking about summer of 2017, okay? So I was dating this girl at the time. We both got into reptiles. I had reptiles, she came in the relationship. She got really into it. And we started amassing a little bit of a collection together, right? So ball pythons, um, I got a bunch of different bearded dragons. My two original ones were still alive. We got a third one. And then she decided she was gonna get a boa. And that was her project. She wanted a boa, I didn't want one. And it turned out to be a really great animal. Red was her name, I remember. So I didn't pick, but also I had no objection to bringing this thing into our home, no problem. However, this animal turned out to be um, unmanageable. I don't know what it was, why this specific animal just she didn't like to be handled. She would strike at the tub when you walk past. Uh, it wasn't a food response because she would strike the food as if it was a defensive bite. We worked with her with gloves. Um, we tried her outside in an enclosure. Like there was nothing that could be done in order to make this animal not be mean or very defensive. And it was weird because she was totally fine up until, I don't know, a few months after we got this animal. So she was feeding well. Everything was great. There was no traumatic thing that happened. Just handled the animal all the time. And then just one day a switch went off and this animal wanted nothing to do with either of us. Couldn't bring anybody over to see this animal. We ended up just taping a piece of paper over that slot in the rack, which is where she seemed like she did best. And then once she outgrew the rack, I just, rehomed her. Because once the that relationship ended that I was in when I got that animal, uh, she did not take the boa, so I was stuck with this boa, which is totally fine, right? I, I understand you can't just take animals everywhere you go. So I did end up rehoming this animal uh, once she was too big for the rack system, and I, I just, I wasn't really into snakes as much then. I was more of like a, a lizard guy and I had some ball pythons. We're gonna get to that in a sec. But either way, just wasn't the right animal for me. So that has to be number five. And we'll make all the rest of these stories a little bit uh, quicker. Number four, we're talking about my Sudan plated lizard, Attila. Now this was actually a really good animal. I got this animal. I think it was the first time I ever showed up to a Kijiji deal. This was in 2019. So a few months after I started the channel and someone knew who I was. They actually contacted me because they knew who I was and they watched the channel and they thought I, I would do great with this animal. This animal would bite the crap out of me, would tail whip me, would pee all over me. Didn't matter how much work I put in with a Sudan plated lizard. She just wasn't handleable. Now she ate really well. Uh, she was fine. I mean, I could walk by and she just sit out bask. But I like animals that are handleable, and this animal just wasn't. There was no way I could take her out for a video. If I did take her out, she would have got away from me underneath something. I never would have would have been able to catch her. In fact, one day I did have someone leave the enclosure open and I walked in and she was on the floor, much smaller collection at the time, and I got a bucket over top of her, but man, it was a mad dash to get this animal back into an enclosure. So I just think that they are great animals and great species, but the one that I got was not socialized and therefore it was difficult to deal with. Even if I opened the glass to clean it out, she would run like crazy and like, yeah, it just wasn't the right animal for me. So coming in at number four is my Sudan plated lizard, Attila. She was rehomed, by the way, she didn't die. She's still alive somewhere. Although I regret these animals, having them has opened up opportunities for my business and something that else has too is today's sponsor, Brilliant, because I'm kind of good at math now. Thanks, Brilliant. I was a terrible student in school. I was bad at math and bad at science. I got hooked up with Brilliant and all of a sudden now I feel like more confident that I can actually learn things in these subjects, which is important because math is important for running 
businesses like this one. And I need to learn more about tech and Brilliant is there for that. If you are lagging behind in the tech department, no matter what your business is, for the most part, you are lagging behind as a whole. And understanding the big ideas behind data and computer science is essential to build a successful career in any sort of tech. This is tech, it's animals, but also I make videos. This has really helped. The best programmers and the best scientists all have one thing in common. And that's just a deep understanding of the key concepts behind their work. How do you stand out? By mastering the key concepts. Brilliant makes it not only easy, but fun to actually learn what you want to learn. And they have so many courses that you can do it in. My big one right now is just math in general, trying to figure out how to manage budgeting all these animals with their feeding, managing my time, all of the stuff that this business is. And that's why everyday math has been my go-to that is what I'm concentrating on right now. This is a quick moving industry. Channels that weren't here six months ago are now huge today. To stay sharp, I need to learn something every single day. And no matter what your career is, the best way to stay sharp is to learn something every single day. But that seems daunting. Nobody has time. Well, you can learn something every single day in as little as 15 minutes with Brilliant. And Brilliant.org makes it easy and fun interactively to learn things like math, science, computer science. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, go to Brilliant.org slash WWR or hit the link below. And the first 200 of you to hit that link will get 20% off your annual subscription of Brilliant. Number three, we'll ruin it with an amphibian. Uh, this is gonna be a shorter one because I had these animals for such a short amount of time. We're talking about Malayan horn frogs. I bought these Malayan horn frogs because they're a bucket list thing. When I was a kid, I remember they were on the front of a reptiles magazine. I just couldn't even believe what I was looking at. One of the most beautiful species on the earth. They make this crazy call. It sounds like a fire alarm or a smoke detector rather running out of battery. Super interesting. Literally, I went down at 2 a.m. looking for the smoke detector, which is hardwired by the way, wondering how it could make that sound. And it was just the horn frogs. I don't know what I did wrong. I keep all sorts of frogs. I never have casualties. I've never had issues. Pac-Man frogs, dumpies, dart frogs, tree frogs, all sorts. Never had issues. The horn frogs, they both died very quickly. I don't know what I did wrong. I know they were wild caught. It might've been parasites. It might've been something that I didn't even do, but either way, they both passed. And uh, my regret is just that I don't know if it was my fault if I did something wrong and I feel bad about it and they're not alive anymore. And I wish I had them, but I'm not gonna get more because I don't know what my mistake was. So anyway, RIP to the nameless Malayan horn frogs. Let's move on to the next one. Number two, my Euromastics. Okay, so. This was a cool animal, and I actually love Euromastics. I think they're amazing species, but this specific one, it was a Saharan Euromastics. Uh, yeah, beautiful, but would tail whip the crap out of me, would run away, had no interest in being held, had no interest in being hand-fed food. It would just turn tail and whip you with their tail. And they're called spiny-tailed lizards a lot of places where they're from in the Middle East because they've got spiny tails. And it's not a very big lizard, but at the same time, it was big enough that it would wrap you in the knuckles and uh, you would feel it. It was just not a, it was just not a comfortable thing. So I don't see the point of keeping animals like this because like I said before, I handle my animals. I like to be able to interact with them. And this animal wanted nothing to do with me. A great display animal, but I wasn't looking for that. If I want a display animal, I'm gonna get an emerald tree boa or a green tree python or Amazon tree boa, like something like that. The animals that I get, I like the handle, so. Therefore, I had to rehome the animal. I had it for like three months, so. Yeah, very interesting, this guy showed up. He gave me a bunch of money and then I forgot to give him the change and I didn't realize that I needed to give him change. It was like this whole awkward thing. Anyway, I might get another one again, but it definitely won't be an adult that hasn't been socialized. And if you're the guy who bought the Euromastics, I still owe you 10 bucks, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's move on to number one. Number one, you won't even believe it, my Tegu Mushu. Okay, I don't really regret getting her because I still want a Tegu, but what I have right now is a box of dirt. I got a box of dirt. dirt. I got a box of dirt. dirt. And guess what's inside it? Dirt. Enough. With a log and a sleeping Tegu under it. I got this animal in September 2021, okay? Got it in September 2021. It went into brumation literally that same week that I got it woke up at the end of April, okay? So we're talking about a long brumation period. And then it went back into brumation 
in September again. This is not normal. I don't know why this is happening. I have other animals that brewmate, right? Bearded dragons will sometimes brewmate, but diamond never does. So I don't know. The temperatures are perfect. Humidity is perfect. They have big enclosure, UVB, the whole thing. I have no idea Mushu does this. She's in really great shape. He, she, I think it's a she, but yeah, she's a sleepy girl. So really, I only have a tagu for a couple months a year so far. And otherwise, I have a UVB bulb that is just wasting away. I mean, tagus are freaking awesome and I love interacting with her when she's awake. I kind of regret getting a tagu that wasn't full grown because that's what I want. I want a full grown tagu that I can socialize with and kind of like take out of the enclosure and handle and, you know, like treat like a scale puppy. That's the idea with, you know, black and white tagus. This animal is not that, and that's okay. I mean, I, I don't regret getting the animal. I regret getting this specific animal, but I still want a tagu. And I'm gonna wait for Musha to grow up because she's well-mannered and she eats well and she grows when she's not in brumation. And brumation is like hibernation, by the way. Uh, like, if you don't know, kind of talking shop here. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments section below. What reptiles do you regret getting? I would love to have a little dialogue with you. As always, a special thanks if you hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps this channel out more you can ever know. And it's free. Hit the buttons, please. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get discounts on merch. You get updates that most people don't know about. You know about some of the reptiles in my collection that I haven't talked about yet, but we'll be talking about next week probably. All that for as little as a dollar a month, and uh, we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'll see you in the next one.